Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. This is in continuation with the white blood cell neoplasm series. In my previous session, I had discussed about the classification of white blood cell neoplasms in general and also the etiopathogenesis of white blood cell neoplasms that's in general, right? In today's session, let's learn a very important topic in white blood cell neoplasm that's acute myeloid leukemia. Okay. In this session, we will concentrate only on the epidemiology of acute myeloid leukemia, how acute myeloid leukemias are classified. This I am talking about the recent WHO classification. And thirdly, etiopathogenesis of acute myeloid leukemia. We all saw this classification in my earlier session, right? We talked about the white blood cell neoplasms are categorized into lymphoid neoplasms, myeloid neoplasms and histiocytosis. If you are new to this video, you please go back to my earlier video and then watch that video as well. Okay, the myeloid neoplasms are further categorized into acute myeloid leukemia, myelodysplastic neoplasms and myeloproliferative neoplasms. So let's concentrate on acute myeloid leukemia today. Now, what is acute myeloid leukemia? This is a tumor of hematopoietic progenitor cells, right? Tumor of hematopoietic progenitor cell, which is caused by acquired oncogenic mutations, which impede, which arrest the differentiation of the progenitor cells. Got this point? So, tumor of hematopoietic progenitors, which is caused by oncogenic mutations, which is acquired, which impede differentiation. Because of the impediment of the differentiation, there is accumulation of immature myeloid blast cells or the immature cells in the bone marrow. Okay, Because of accumulation of immature cells in the bone marrow, it leads to bone marrow failure. Okay, And the symptoms of acute myeloid leukemia is because of bone marrow failure. It's because of anemia, it's because of thrombocytopenia, it's because of neutropenia. All the clinical manifestations of acute myeloid leukemia is because of bone marrow failure, which essentially means it's because of anemia, thrombocytopenia and neutropenia. Epidemiology. It can occur in all the age group of individuals. It, the incidence of acute myeloid leukemia increases as we grow older. Of course, the peak incidence of acute myeloid leukemia is around 60 years of age. Classification of acute myeloid leukemia. One of the most difficult aspects of acute myeloid leukemia. We have seen n number of classifications in our early years, right? We had morphological classification, we had molecular classification, we had FAB classification, right? Now, thankfully, the new WHO classification has simplified classification of acute myeloid leukemia, right? So, it's class categorized into broadly two categories. The first one is acute myeloid leukemia with defining genetic abnormalities. Note this point, with defining genetic abnormalities. AML with defining genetic abnormalities. The second category is AML defined by differentiation. This is more of a morphological classification, okay? AML defined by differentiation. And the third one, which not exactly is a type of, I mean, under the classification, but it is considered as a separate entity which is referred to as a myeloid sarcoma. Myeloid sarcoma meaning localized proliferation of these myeloid precursor cells. Okay. For all practical purposes, if you, if you remember two important things. One, AML which is having defined genetic abnormalities and second one, AML with differentiation, defined by differentiation. This is more than enough. Now, let us see how do we categorize each of these subcategories. Acute myeloid leukemia with defining genetic abnormalities. Now, what are the genetic abnormalities which, is, which are important? One, it can be fusions. Okay, The genes can fuse, result in leukemias. Now, what are the examples for genetic fusion? PML-RA-RA fusion, RUNX1, RUNX1-T1, CBFP-MYH11, DEKNUP214, RBN15, MRTFA and BCL ABL, BCR ABL1 mutation. Just like what you saw in chronic myeloid leukemia, it can also be seen in acute myeloid leukemia. Okay. The one which I have written uh, in the green color, that means these are the mutations which have a very good prognosis. Right. Even if you do not remember all these fusions, at least remember the first two, PML-RARA, RUNX1, RUNX1-T1 mutations. 
okay the second important genetic abnormality are the rearrangements there is genetic rearrangement which can happen what are the examples kmt2a rearrangement if the patient is found to have this kmt2a rearrangement this patient definitely is going to fare very bad it has a worse prognosis second rearrangements could be mecom and nup98 rearrangements the third one is mutations npm1 mutation again this mutation has a very good prognosis okay ceb pa mutations so remember fusion rearrangement and mutation and the fourth category is aml which is myelodysplasia related okay in my earlier sessions i talked about myeloproliferative and myelodysplastic neoplasms right if the aml is a consequence of myelodysplasia that's another category and the fourth one apart from these mutations whichever we have discussed right now that's another category which means aml with other defined genetic alterations other than fusion rearrangement and mutation okay so if you see any of these genetic rearrangements or fusions or mutations this comes under the first category of acute myeloid leukemia which is acute myeloid leukemia with defining genetic abnormalities got this point now moving on to second category aml defined by differentiation this you can appreciate morphologically by looking at the peripheral smear and the bone marrow right now aml minimally differentiated the first category is aml minimally differentiated aml without maturation aml with maturation acute basophilic leukemia acute myelomonocytic leukemia acute monocytic leukemia acute erythroid leukemia and lastly acute megakaryoblastic leukemia essentially just like the fab classification which you had earlier studied but then this is under aml defined by differentiation you are not using the word fab classification here right simple aml defined by differentiation all these categories further acute erythroid leukemia are further sub categorized into erythroid myeloid subtype or pure erythroid subtype okay so these are the types of leukemias which are defined by differentiation now having understood the classification of acute myeloid leukemia thankfully who 5th edition has simplified the classification let's now understand the pathogenesis of acute myeloid leukemia okay it can be categorized i mean the categories of pathogenetic mechanisms or pathways can be categorized into transcription factor mutations which means there is blocking of the cell maturation okay these are transcription factor mutations the second one is mutations which are involving in signaling proteins that means there is uncontrolled cell growth the third one is epigenetic regulator mutations which basically result in faulty expression of the genes and the fourth one is p53 mutations which is faulty tumor suppression okay so what are these transcription factor mutations let me give you a two examples the first example is translocation involving the chromosomes number 8 and 21 and inversion of the chromosome 16 they are the two most common abnormalities in aml okay now what does this do these are the two chromosomes these are the two genes which are involved in i mean these affect are you nx1 gene and cbfb gene okay so basically these normally what happens the are you nx1 and cbfb they work together they work together as a team and then to perform a transcription factor or to form a transcription factor which is needed for normal maturation okay so are you nx1 cbfb they are normally required for normal maturation now what happens if there is mutation involving the genes involving these genes so what happens it results in the formation of chimeric genes or fused genes which basically result in the formation of abnormal fusion proteins which interferes with this normal function what is a normal function normal function is the one which forms as a team to form a transcription factor which results in normal maturation right so this normal maturation thing is interfered so interference with the normal function of ru nx1 and cbfb function which basically means there is blockage in the maturation of the myeloid cells leading on to acute myeloid leukemia 
right this is one example another example is very classically acute promyelocytic leukemia which is caused by the translocations of the chromosome number 15 and 17 and creating a fusion gene called pmlrara fusion gene and that results in the fusion protein and this fusion protein resulting because of this translocation it blocks the final step of the granulocyte development essentially means it is blocking the maturation right and that results in leukemia and the good news about this particular translocation is that the drug called all trans retinoic acid atra and arsenic trioxide you know it blocks the formation of this fusion protein it directly attacks the fusion protein and once this fusion protein is attacked what happens it does not block the final step okay which means to say that there is a restoration of normal cell function that is why if the patients are found to have this particular translocation okay this particular leukemia that means you are essentially looking at the leukemia with an excellent prognosis with around 90% cure rate right now second important kind of mutations are the mutations in signaling proteins which result in results in uncontrolled cell growth that's why they are also called as pro growth mutations example normally what happens this flt3 is a receptor tyrosine kinase normally helps in signaling of growth if there is mutation involving the gene coding this flt3 the flt3 becomes more active even without any external signal this is now active okay that's why it's called pro growth mutation leading to increased proliferation and survival of even abnormal cells and that's essentially you're looking at leukemia right so this is about the pro growth mutations the third one is epigenetic regulator mutations resulting in the faulty gene expression right now we know that there are genes which control how the dna is packaged and expressed okay and the mutations involving these genes can affect the dna methylation what do you mean by dna methylation basically the dna methylation is the one which turns genes off or on via chemical tags and it can also affect the cohesion proteins which basically helps to organize the 3d structure of the dna within the nucleus okay so whenever there is a mutation involving these genes for example idh1 and idh2 genes mutation it results in formation of something called 2 hydroxy glutarate which is an onco metabolite resulting in the formation of acute myeloid leukemia but the exact pathogenesis leading to aml is not really known right it is unknown as of now the last one is the p53 mutations which basically means there is faulty tumor suppression because we all know that the t53 is the guardian of genome right whenever there is mutation of this tp53 there is poor dna damage control there is resistance to the cell death and there is accumulation of abnormal cells leading on to acute leukemia okay so this is essentially the pathogenetic mechanisms of acute myeloid leukemia okay remember all these four kind of mutations so with this we have concluded understood the concepts of epidemiology simplified the classification of acute myeloid leukemia and lastly understood the etiopathogenesis of acute myeloid leukemia in my next session i will discuss the morphology clinical features and the prognosis of acute myeloid leukemia thank you for watching if you have liked this video hit the like button do not forget to comment if you have anything to ask do consider subscribing if you find this video useful and do not forget to share so that others can get the best use of this particular video thank you very much bye bye